In this video, we'll use implicit differentiation to find the derivatives of the inverse trig functions. First, the inverse sine function. Recall that y equals sine inverse of x means that y is the angle in radians whose sine is x. In other words, we can write x equals sine of y as an almost equivalent statement. I say almost equivalent because there are lots of different y's whose sine is x. Lots of different angles can have the same resulting sine. And for the inverse sine function, we specify that that angle y has to be between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. That's just the convention. Be careful not to mistake sine inverse of x, which is an inverse function, and 1 over sine x, which is a reciprocal function. These are not the same thing. This negative 1 does not mean reciprocal here. It means inverse function. There is another notation for inverse sine, which is arc sine. So arc sine of x is the same thing as sine inverse of x. We want to find the derivative of sine inverse of x. In other words, the derivative of y with respect to x, where y is sine inverse of x. I'm going to rewrite this equation here as x equals sine y, and then use implicit differentiation. So taking the derivative of both sides with respect to x, I have derivative of x is equal to the derivative of sine y. In other words, 1 is equal to cosine of y times dy dx. Solving for dy dx, I have that dy dx is 1 over cosine of y. Now I found the derivative, but it's not in a super useful form because there's still a y in the expression. I'd rather have it all in terms of x. Well, I could rewrite this as dy dx is 1 over cosine of sine inverse of x, since, after all, y is equal to sine inverse of x, but that's still not a super useful form because it's difficult to evaluate this. So instead of doing this, I'm going to look at a right triangle. I want to label my triangle with y and x. Since y is my angle, I'll put it here, and since sine of y is x, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse, I can label my opposite side with x and my hypotenuse with 1. From this, I can figure out the length of my remaining side. It's going to have to be the square root of 1 minus x squared by the Pythagorean theorem. Now I can compute cosine of y just from the triangle. Cosine of y is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, or just the square root of 1 minus x squared. I've been implicitly assuming that y is a positive angle between 0 and pi over 2 when I've been drawing this triangle, but you can check that the same formula also works if y is a negative angle. Think of it going down here on the unit circle instead of up here. So now that I have a formula for cosine y in terms of x, I can go back to my derivative and substitute, and I get dy dx is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. In other words, I found a formula for the derivative of inverse sine of x. We can carry out a similar process to find the derivative of inverse cosine. y equals cosine inverse x means that x is equal to cosine of y, and by convention, y lies between 0 and pi. To find the derivative of arc cosine of x, arc cosine is just an alternative notation for cosine inverse, I can write y equals arc cosine of x, and equivalently, x equals the cosine of y, and then I want to find dy dx using implicit differentiation. Please pause the video and try it for yourself before going on. 
So starting with the equation x equals cosine y, we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. The derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of cosine y is negative sine y dy dx. So dy dx is equal to negative 1 over sine y. As before, I can draw and label a right triangle. The angle is y, and now I know that x is cosine of y, so I'm going to put x on the adjacent side and 1 on the hypotenuse leaving the square root of 1 minus x squared on the opposite side, which means that sine of y, which is opposite over hypotenuse, is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. And so dy dx is going to be negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, and I have my formula for the derivative of arc cosine of x. Inverse tangent can be handled very similarly, and again, you may want to try it for yourself before watching the video. y equals inverse tangent of x means that x is tangent of y, and the convention is that y is supposed to lie between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Proceeding as before, we write y equals arctan of x, and x equals tan of y. Take the derivative of both sides. So we get 1 equals secant squared of y dy dx. Solving for dy dx, we have 1 over secant squared of y. And using our right triangle as before, we can label the angle of, as y. Since I know that tangent y is x and tangent is opposite over adjacent, I'm going to label the opposite side x and the adjacent side 1, which gives us a hypotenuse of the square root of 1 plus x squared. Now we know that secant of y is 1 over cosine of y, so that's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's the square root of 1 plus x squared over 1, and so secant squared of y is just the square of this, which is 1 plus x squared. Now I can substitute into my formula for dy dx, and I get dy dx is 1 over 1 plus x squared, which gives me a nice formula for the derivative of inverse tangent. The other inverse trig functions cotangent inverse, secant inverse, and cosecant inverse have derivatives that can be computed similarly. The following table summarizes these results. In some books, you may see absolute value signs around the x for the formulas for inverse secant and inverse cosecant. Of course, when x is positive, this makes no difference. And when x is negative, this discrepancy comes from differences in the convention for the range of y for these inverse trig functions, secant inverse and cosecant inverse. Notice that the derivatives of the inverse trig functions that start with co all have negative signs in front of them and are the negatives of the corresponding inverse trig functions without the co. That makes it easier to remember them. You should memorize these formulas. Let's do one example using the formulas that we just found. Let's compute the derivative of tan inverse of a plus x over a minus x. We'll want to use the formula for the derivative of tan inverse x. Now to compute dy dx for our function, we can use the chain rule. The outside function is tan inverse, whose derivative is 1 over 1 plus the inside function squared. We'll need to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. I'll just copy over the first part and take the derivative of a plus x over a minus x using the quotient rule. So I put the denominator on the bottom and square it, and then I take low times d high, the derivative of a plus x with respect to x is just 1, 
minus high d low, the derivative of a minus x with respect to x is negative 1. I'll simplify my numerator, a minus x, the negative 1 and the negative sign here cancel, so I get plus a plus x. On the denominator, I have 1 plus a plus x squared over a minus x squared multiplied by a minus x squared. Canceling in the numerator, I get 2a, and distributing in the denominator, I get a minus x squared plus a plus x squared. If I expand out the denominator, this simplifies to 2a over 2a squared plus 2x squared, or just a over a squared plus x squared, which is a pretty nice derivative. So now you know the derivatives of the inverse trig functions, and you also know how to find them using implicit differentiation if you ever forget them.